this one's a lot of fun. Stamping with the sponge. There, now there's different sponges. So looking at my plate here, we can see that I've got like a sea sponge. You know, sponges grow in the ocean naturally. Um, so we have like a more like a sea sponge here that has all these big, nice, beautiful organic holes in it. We've got like more of the kitchen sponge that's really dense and usually square or rec usually rectangular. And then we have just kind of like shaped sponges, smaller holes than this. So they all come in different shapes and sizes. So we can use that to our benefit. So I'm going to paint um, just on the sponge with a little bit of watercolor. And again, this is tempera paint. So if I just add water to it, it just becomes watercolor. Just like, um, just like we've been using. So I'm just gonna gently stamp with that and you're gonna see gorgeous, gorgeous texture. So just a controlled stamp, really beautiful, gorgeous texture, okay? Now, if I keep doing that, I can get um, more of a layered um, effect of color. So if you've ever been to like a restaurant I've noticed mostly in like uh, Mexican food or Italian food restaurants, they'll use like a painting technique like this on the wall to create the uh, richness, a richness in the wall color. So here I'm using blues and purples, but I've seen like a, a Tuscan effect with like oranges and yellows in an Italian restaurant, you know, to show um, just more depth in the color. Another great thing about painting a wall like that is if the wall has a lot of imperfections, a flat color would really showcase any imperfections. And doing something like this where there's depth in the color allows you to kind of disguise some of that. So that's kind of another little technique. So that's one way. Another way would be to um, just kind of really use the smaller parts of it and then you could get color like we were talking about like in a cloud or something like that and kind of do that so I also want to talk about just having fun with it so I'm going to uh, paint the sponge um, a solid color and because it's you know a circle I just automatically happen to think of yellow maybe it's you know all the emojis in my head right now um, so I'm painting the circle a solid color and now, just for fun, I'm going to just kind of do something really simple, and we'll just create a little happy face here, because we're happy to be painting. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, and the fun part about sponge stamping is that I can kind of do it over and over, so that's really cute and fun. And then I'm gonna just be able to do this um, kind of several more times so we can have fun with that. Yes. Kind of like the stamp we just made. And then you'll see as I continue, it'll get you know a little bit more muted. Um, so, yeah, very, I'm very happy to be painting. <laughs> okay, so that's just something fun you can do too. Another thing that um, I enjoy doing is I actually just kind of paint stripes down the side of the sponge. So let me show you what you can do with that. So I'm just, I'm literally just painting stripes down the side of the sponge. Okay. And now I'm going to drag sponge. That's on our list of things to do. I'm going to drag sponge. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to set it down, and I'm just going to pull it. And I'm going to drag sponge. And it's so pretty. Um, and so you could potentially even do a whole striped um, background like that. So just it's just really beautiful. So these some of these, again, they're not the most functional of techniques as they are fun and creative ways to add interest and color to your artwork. So I could, I could draw, I could let that dry and I could draw on top of it. It's just another thing. Instead of just painting a flat background, you know, it's just another thing. Um, I could also kind of swirl it like this and you get kind of like little snail shells which are kind of fun so that's another um, another interesting thing you could do with it wow. um, another item I want to go back to on this page because we do need to let the base dry a little <laughs> bit is called scumball and so scumball will just need a little bit of a um, um, 
dry base. So I'm just gonna kind of put this color down. I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit under my scraping technique here that we need to go back to, okay? All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for a moment. I'm gonna go back to that one. That one will be scumball. So I'm gonna continue with some fun ones on here. Um, so this is kind of our fun page. Um, I'm going to do uh, straw blowing, salt, and rubbing alcohol. Okay, so um, straw blowing, you need to have it be kind of watery, okay? So just make sure that your puddle that you make has enough water that it can move, okay? Because if it's too thick, you're gonna be here a while. So I have, I have a puddly moving puddle. I'm gonna take my straw and I'm going to just <laughs> blow in a direction so that it'll kind of push away um, from the direction I'm coming from. So I can do this in a controlled manner where I just kind of go slow and steady or fast and fierce will make it spider out. So we'll look at the difference here. Okay, so this is just kind of a slow and steady controlled. Now if I go fast and fierce, okay, you get much thinner, spidery little tentacles go out, okay? Now, I could do this in a very controlled manner and I could even make a straw blown tree trunk and let it become the branches. And then I could use a stamping and a splattering technique to create the um, foliage, the leaves on top. That's a really fun way to paint a tree. Um, so give it, you could, you could actually do that as you work on these. You could, you know, try that out using the straw blowing technique and the splatter and sponging technique to try and make a little fun artistic tree. Um, okay, salt is really fun. Again, this one is necessary that you use water. So these are kind of wet, transparent, wet into wet colors. So I'm taking my um, transparent, wet into wet here technique, okay? And I'm going to literally sprinkle salt on it and I'm gonna let that dry. I'm done with that technique. Tomorrow when I come back and check my paper, what will have happened is the salt absorbed the color and so when it dries, I'll just brush the salt off and it will have left all these little white sprinklings of, of color change. So it can look like kind of like, not necessarily like snow, but kind of that effect of snow or rain or something, or just, just an added interesting texture. Okay. I'm going to do the um, alcohol now, um, which is rubbing alcohol, not to be drank alcohol. Um, this is the kind of alcohol you find in the Band-Aid section for your wounds. Um, so this is not something that you would ingest. So I have it in a convenient little squirt bottle. Again, you need to have a um, wet into wet or a transparent now this one is different than salt. Salt sucks up the color and alcohol pushes the color away. So salt is like the friend who wants you around and alcohol is like the, the one who doesn't want to do with anybody today. Okay, so here we go. We're going to um, apply the alcohol drops and watch it just will shove the color away. So there it goes. And so this one can be really fun. Um, I've had students make um, like octopus tentacles and things like that. So you wanna kind of keep it controlled so that you don't get too much. I'm just doing one drop at a time. If you squirt too much, it'll just turn into a puddle of nothing. But when you squirt just right, you get these really beautiful uh, little tentacle shapes. And again, what's it good for? Fun? or an octopus tentacle, or um, just creating some texture. It's creating texture in paint. Um, and now we're just going to go, I'm just double checking that I've done all of my techniques here. 
And now I'm just gonna go back one last time, you guys, to finish up my scraping and my scumble. So scumble is um, the idea of having kind of a base color and then creating texture. So I'm just gonna cross hatch basically with my brush. And what I'm doing is just creating texture. Now, all of my colors should still show clearly, so I should never cover up my entire background, and I should never fully mix the colors that I'm applying right now. They should all still show. So I, as I put red, I should still see it. And again, I'm just kind of cross-touching them over each other, and I'm just creating um, a texture. So this is something, again, that you could do as a background that would just be more interesting than a flat color. Um, or I might, um, if I'm doing kind of like an impressionistic vase of flowers, I might use like a stumbling technique for my um, blooms, you know, so that I don't want detail. I just want the idea of a lot of color, right? So that's when you don't need a lot of detail. Okay, and for my favorite is scraping. So I've picked kind of like a pink color. So I think I'm going to go with like this... Um, turquoise on top. So I'm going to apply turquoise completely on top and then I'm going to, while the second layer of turquoise is wet, that's important, it has to be while it's wet, I'm going to scrape. So there's a couple ways to scrape, right? We've done, um, we've tried this one using a tool such as this so I can scrape and isn't that fun? So I have that, that's gorgeous. So you gotta do it while it's wet. Now I'm just gonna apply a little bit more up here just to have fun with that. I'm gonna use that and then I'm also gonna do my name and maybe a little flower. So it's really fun. Now you can see how great the contrasting colors work. So make sure for that one that you pick really contrasting colors so you can really showcase the fun thing that you're drawing in there, okay? So I will also go back in and label all of these to remind myself what I did. And so I want to see all of yours labeled. I will also put my book on the back counter. It is all the painting techniques and they are all labeled with examples of what these look like when they're dry, okay? So that's going to be back there for you as well. So we're 